Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to introduce the speaker of the hour. They should have put him at my mercy this morning, but okay. All right. Well, what can I say about Deacon Johnson? <laughs> Man, I think he's the best deacon. He's one of the best deacons. I, I, I can tell you, if I had to put him on a scale from 1 to 10, he would definitely be a 10 plus when it comes to being a deacon. Amen. He is a really, really, really good deacon. And, you know, we got to give credit when credit is due. Amen. He is dependable. He's accountable. I mean, I, I, I don't, only thing I can say about, bad about him is that he wrecked my nerve. But I think that's all of our testimony <laughs> when it comes to Deacon Johnson. Deacon Johnson knows how to wreck your nerve, but he really knows how to study, preach, and teach the word of God. Amen? And that's what's important. If he's getting on your nerve, that means you ain't doing something right. Amen? <laughs> so at this time, without further ado, I will bring to your front none other than number one, Deacon Johnson. Praise the Lord as he come before us. You better preach. I want to get saved today. Okay. <laughs> she talking about I better preach so she can get saved today. I wanted to, I wanted to put her in that tub last week so let's see that water boil. I thank the Lord for this opportunity. And the thing about this let me uh, get started first because I've got some things I want to say, but I want to get to read and pray first because I, my mind have a tendency to run a rapid sometime. But by doing this, I give it a chance to slow down a little bit. I begin to understand myself a little more every day. Because some things that we try to neglect in us, but we have to understand that God is working in us. And we have to ask him for things that we know that we can't control ourselves. And this problem thing that I have with my mind go to racing, I was talking to Pastor Boone not too long ago about it. And I have to take the time and read the word like he say, and then settle down a little bit. And then you can, everything will fall in place. When you have a problem and you don't ask somebody why is it happening, then you let it continue to happen and God can always help you with it. And this is one thing I'm beginning to understand a lot of things about myself, that this is a process. And this process that we're going to talk about today, it is... Like Sunday school this morning, I wasn't opening my mouth because I was like Pastor Vaughn this morning. I didn't want to spill all the beans that I wanted to say in the word today, so let us stand. The title of this lesson is The Greatest Evangelist, which is Jesus Christ. And we're going to come from John 3rd chapter. You have it on your program. Let us read. We're going to read from 1 to 21. He said, there was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher coming from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listen, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not thou tell which it, for it comes and with it goes? So is every one that is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? 
Jesus answered and, and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and know not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do, no, we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And the, no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came up down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believing on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his Son into the world to condemn the world. God sent his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Not see, not, I re, let me rephrase that. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not on condemned already, is condemned, not condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world, and men loveth darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds show be, should be reproved. But he that doeth true come to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God by his moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah. Father, we come to give you the honor and the glory this morning in Jesus' name for this service, Father. Father, we action this morning for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Father. Let that I may decrease where you may increase, Father. Let your word go forth, Father, in each and every way that you desire, Father. We're giving you the honor and the glory for right now. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. I thank the Lord I give Pastor Boone and his wife the honor and give my hand for being in this house of Lord, which they are. Give Pastor Boone his wife a hand. I don't want to just hear one hand. <laughs> Boy, I tell you something. That wife of his can make some faces. I give her a program this morning about water, and I went back there to make some tea. And when I come back, boy, I saw an expression on that face, say, what'd you do to me now? And she got him. I think the Lord, because what we just got through reading, I've been walking around with that in my head for months now. God was trying to show me and teach me something that is becoming very difficult, even for us. You know, I think about last week's Sunday school lesson and everything that went on. And the word said it again this morning, say, everything is possible to him that believeth. But we saw some things last week that we listened, and even myself, like I say, we getting where it is coming very difficult, even for the saints of God, to depend on the Lord. We become so self that we begin to think that we that we kind of block, as saints, we block God out. All situations that we come into, if we would stop be trying to deal with it ourselves, we would be a lot better off. Let me say, why the Lord can't do it for me? If you wait, he can do it for you. Every promise that God has given to us, and we try to make those promises a lie. Why are we making them a lot? Because we don't believe them. What Nicodemus, when he called it the great evangelist, there's something that was going on. When I say great, Jesus, John showed where this, 
he was witnessing to a person who already believed that I'm okay. This good morning Sunday school lesson say the rich young ruler say, I'm saved. I done kept everything. But there's something that we even as religious leaders and some that even being religious leader, there always is something that we are missing. We don't have it all. Because if we had it all, we'd be in heaven. But we, as down here, we don't have it all. The Jews said we, we are God's people. We are Abraham's seed. We know we're not going to hell because we belong to God. God didn't send Abraham to hell, so we know he can't send us. But you have to understand who God is. Nicodemus saw something. And now you look in the first verse of who he was. He said, Nic say, there was a man of Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He wasn't no ordinary man. He knew that God's law. He knew uh, what God expected from him through the law. He had to interpret the law. He was not only a leader, right? He had to be a teacher too. He had to enforce the law because he belongs to the Sanhedrins. The Sanhedrin was a governing body. There was Herod, which Caesar said to have control of that area. Then the Sanhedrin was under Herod. They the one kept the order and the law and everything else. Nicodemus, a teacher, knew he was a political, re he was a religious, a political power in a common place. But in all of that, the political, judicial, religious body of the rulers of Israel, he was not just no ordinary man. He had status. The only person he had to deal with was the priest. If you look in the top of verse 7, Jesus took a cord and went in there and cleaned the, the temple out because they were selling goods in there. You know how did they get the license to sell those goods in there? They came from the priest. They issued them. But Jesus said, enough is enough. This is God's house. I'm going to clean it out. And let me tell you something. If you wrap them cords together, I don't know if anybody ever been beat by a cord, but if you wrap them cords together, you want to run for whatever you have left. The thing that you have to understand, whose place it is. This place is God's house. They may take it for a church or may say for four walls, and that's it. But Pastor Boone was singing this morning. The Spirit is dwelling. If the Spirit is dwelling here, who is here? God is here. Say so when two or three are together, he's right here in the midst. Nicodemus knew the law, but he something in him was not satisfied. And when something in you is not satisfied, what are you going to do? You try to do something about it or you try to hold back and frustrate yourself. In verse 2, he said, the man came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that you are a preacher come from God for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is sent him see when Nicodemus seen Jesus clean out the temple for them sell it in the temples and then he saw the miracles that God did that opened his eyes it's more to him than when let me tell you something let's go back there how much more is Jesus to you now than when you got saved when you got saved, he was just there. Now that you don't went through some things and accepted him, he's a lot more to you now. And before it's over with, he's going to be a lot more than that. Because the more you grow, the more you depend. Nicodemus don't know. Because one thing about this you have to understand. A man cannot understand in his natural mind cannot understand spiritual things. Because it looked foolish to him. When we sit every day and we calculate our bills and we think about, I can pay this, I can pay that, I can't pay this, and I can't pay that. Who are you depending on? You're depending on self. 
But when you start depending on God, seek ye the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, everything will be added unto him. When you start depending on him, you will see things take place in your life that you wonder, how did they get to be? Nicodemus is a blind man right now. The only thing he's looking for, he's looking for information. He said, I know you come from God. The point he missed is this. He is God. Because, but he can't see that now. Every time that we go into a situation and we don't depend on God, we can't see him neither. We're blind. He said, I'll tell you something about the miracles, the signs that you do unless God is with you. See, there are signs. Don't never believe in signs. Signs are there and they are good. But the signs that you have to understand, there's, and you go back down to Revelation and you say in Revelation and Genesis and Exodus. When the witch come with, the, they, when Moses went into Egypt, he throw down his staff. When he throw down his staff, what happened? Their preachers throw down their staff, and what did you have? You had three servants, serpents laying on the ground. In the end, they say to Antichrist, he's going to do miracles. So you can't depend on him. All you can do is live by God's word. Don't be focused so much on miracles and signs. They say if Jesus, when he was tempted, if he'd have jumped off the temple, in a couple of days he'd have had to do something else in order for them to believe in him. The greatest sermon that you can ever preach is your life. The way you, like, way you live your life, people will understand that. But Jesus said, Nicodemus thinking in the mind, say, I'm okay now. I'm okay. And nothing, nothing that I is, how you say, everything is okay now. I done went to Jesus, I done talked to him. But look at the three and four. He said what he had to say. Now, Jesus, this is like a play. Jesus is going to say what he had to do. Jesus answered and said and said to him, Most assuredly I say unto you, unless you are born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, I'm Jews. I'm a Jew. I am out of the son of Abraham, right? I know that I am appointed by God, and I'm going to heaven. They believe this. They believe this so much they say Abraham was at the gate of hell and every Jew that came there that if he was going in there, God would turn him around. Abraham would turn around and say, you don't belong in there. They believe these things. But when you get wrapped up in things of, of interpretation of God's word, you'll get confused. And the blind following the blind will not take you to heaven. It will not. His open words was correct. Not quite. Like I say, Jesus told him, but he couldn't, he couldn't see it. Say, Jesus is God, not a teacher from God. And then it says, and you go back and you talk about it, say, Jesus answered more than surely I say unto you, unless you are born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, boy, look at him. In the natural mind, the boy said, what you talking about, Jesus? Tell me what you talking about. Because you telling me Right? I got to be born again. See, his mind is not there. Our mind was not there. When, when you got witness to, if God didn't open your heart, you would still be looking at whatever somebody told you. Nicodemus followed the only thing that he knew. He said because he's living in the natural mind, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? That's the natural way. Ain't no way for him to climb in that womb after being 80 years old or whatever. It's spiritual. He couldn't see the spiritual part. When you get saved, you can't see the spiritual part because I'm going to tell you why. I've experienced it. Pastor Boone was teaching a Thursday night class, which is our beginner's class. Pastor Boone say, your works will be tested by fire. Boy, look at him. I couldn't accept that. I was still in the natural. I couldn't accept when we say fire in the Bible was for the word. Your word, your, your, word, your works will be tested by 
fire. That's the word. But me being in the natural, what do I think? I think it's got to burn up. And he gave me scripture after scripture after scripture. I just couldn't handle it. It just wasn't logical for me to say that fire mean word. But then all of a sudden, I kept going and kept going to down in Jeremiah. It said, with Pastor Boone, say fire is the word. That's the only way I would accept it. God had to show it to me. And see, that's what I know because one of the things that I have experienced, listen to Nicodemus, I can't accept it because why? I'm a baby. He said born again, right? When you're born again, you're not born with full knowledge. If you was born with full knowledge, there would be no reason for you to open a book. Be no reason for it. But you're born again. When you're born, who are you depending on? You're depending on your parents. David depends on Maria and Craig. We still got grown children. They depend on, Elaborn children still depend on him. When the fire get hot, right, they're grown. The fire get hot, who they depend on? Depend on y'all. What we are seeing is this. All through our life, until we get to heaven, we've got to depend on who? On God, because he's our father. He makes everything for us. He created everything for his son, that we become inheritance of it. But we've got to learn to depend on him. He is telling Nicodemus something that Nicodemus can't comprehend. But the thing that you have to understand, Nicodemus is saying, I am who I am. I know a lot of things. But see, when you got to take everything that you've known all your life and throw it out the window, that's not a good feeling. <laughs> I experienced so many things. He still, he still throwed my best thought out the window. That's the boom did. In the old days, you look at the activities where the baby, Jesus, and the man, and, and, uh, and the camels, and the uh, wise men, and all that stuff. And I'm thinking, all my life, I seen these things. I believe them. When we went to church for Christmas, they taught it. And then I came to church one Thursday night, and we was talking about it. Dr. Boone said, do you know that he didn't come to the manger? And I said, what? You know he didn't come to the manger? I was like that, I was, <laughs> I was like that rich ruler. I left him agreed. Something you know all your life, right, don't mean nothing to you no more. But, and when he opened the book and opened the Bible and showed me the word, what can you do? You have to accept it. I might not accept the testing by the word, but I might have, I know I got to accept a, a wise man, right? But eventually you have to accept it. But that's the Holy Spirit that's in you. We come to this second thing, they still having a discussion. Jesus is trying to tell Nicodemus something. Throw out what you know and accept what I'm telling you. Five to eight. This is Jesus now. Jesus answered, more than surely I say unto you, unless you be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. I say, do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. That which, is, which the wind blow its wish, that, that wind blows where it wish, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it come from and where it goes. So is everyone who's born of the Spirit. You see, uh, surely, verily, verily, I say to you, unless you're born of the water and the Spirit. See, that word born again, is again is a group, it's a Greek word, gorgeous, and it means from above. You are born again from above. The Holy Spirit come from you because God is where? In heaven, right? You are born again from above. Flesh, you already got a natural birth. What are the consequences of your natural birth? I don't think you want to. <laughs> it is very difficult sometimes to see how we are when it comes to dealing 
with our natural birth. When we sit down and take a look at our natural birth, I'll tell you something. I know from experience. I listened to, if I got the verse, I think I might have left it. I listened to Paul in the seventh chapter and in the 15th verse. Turn your Bibles there, please, if I have it. Because I want you to see who we are. Seventh chapter, starting with the 15th verse, 14th verse. This is Paul. This is us. And see, I didn't give it to you. I don't know which one. It was. He said, I didn't know if I was going to read it. He said, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For that which I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that do I. For if then I do that which, is, which I would not, I consent unto the law that is, it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good things. For, no, for to will is to present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is more, no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity in the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of the death, of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. For then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Flesh against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. There's a war going in your body. But let me tell you something. That war going in your body gives you the decision that now you can overtake with the power in you. Because greater is he is in me than he is in the world. You don't have to submit to this. That's why he's thanking God for what he's done into his life. Because what Jesus Christ did into his life. I'm going to tell you something. How many times have we said that we can change? You cannot change without Jesus Christ. We try. I'm not, gonna do, I'm not going out this weekend. I'm going to stay home this weekend. I'm not going to do nothing. You say that on Monday. And then by Wednesday, you go to thinking about what I'm going to do for the weekend. I don't want to see that person no more. I'm done with him. Then what do you have to do? You rebuke everything and tell a lie to yourself. Try to make like you are someone or who you are. And when it comes down, you serve sin until Jesus stepped in your life. Nicodemus thought he was okay. Everybody, when they're walking in the world, we think we okay. You ask people to now say, I try to witness to them by God, they say, I'm okay. Dr. Bone said last week, say he was out there trying to witness to him, say he cleaned out the neighborhood. Everybody got in their car and went home. I bet when he got home, the wife said, what y'all doing here? Because they was running from the Lord. See, the Holy Spirit is the part that capitalizes. Jesus referring to God, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, enable the Spirit birth in us. He said this morning in Sunday school, why do we make it so complicated? We're born again. It's not complicated. You know, when the jailer when Paul was in jail and Silas was in jail and they were singing a song and the gates opened up, the doors opened up and the man woke up out of the jailer, woke up out of his sleep. And when he woke up out of his sleep, he saw the doors open. He was finna fall on his sword and kill himself. And he woke up, Paul said, don't harm yourself. He said, we're all here. He thought about it and said, what must I do to be saved? He didn't give him a long list of things that he had to do. He just said, believe 
on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in our situations that we face, right? All God is asking us to do is what? Believe. That's all he's asking us to do. When situations come up, put a song in your heart and put a joy in your heart. And you'll see those situations go faster than you think they could ever go because you're not playing why it's happened to me, the pity party. Most assuredly, I say unto you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. I'm telling you something. If you're not saved, you think you have a joyful life. You say, those saved people over there, they ain't got nothing to do. But let me tell you something. You cannot find a better life than this one. I didn't think that before I got saved. But now that I got saved, well, let me tell you something. I wouldn't want to be nowhere else. This is a joyful life. It may not be all the time the way you want it to be. But the whole, the whole program out that a lot of time, if we stop looking at what the natural things that we have here and start looking into the heavenly things that's coming up, you overlook all the problems and everything you have. This is not your home. Why do you want to make it your home? I've got people in the building that's 95, 96 years old, and some of them looking for one thing. They say, well, I'm going on. They don't know where they're going, but if they're not saved, right? One of the preachers on television, he said, you know what? I've seen, and I know I've read in the book of Revelations. He said, we got streets of gold. We got mansions. You looking for a mansion here? Pay up by passing here and wait for the one you get in heaven. He said, well, all I see, but let me tell you something. It's one thing that you don't never understand. And the guy started crying when he said this. He said, I will see the face of Jesus Christ. I will see his face. What you know and what you believe, if it don't involve Jesus Christ, is not worth nothing. It's not worth anything. Your love and his love, right? In John 13 and 16, he says, you know one thing, the teaching that he's trying to give Nicodemus, right, is trying to show him, take yourself out of this. Even for the saints of God, we have to start taking ourself. Stop, our, stop your relationship with self. We got so much relationship with self. Sitting on the job, like I said before, I can pay this bill. I can pay that bill. I got to work this many hours. I got to make that many hours. I got to do this. I got to do that. We bog ourselves down with so much heavy weight that it's not even, re it takes the joy out of our life. It takes the joy out of our life. If you got a headache, you run around, oh, Lord, I ain't got no aspirin. So you're looking for the aspirin first, right? Start believing this. I got a headache. Put that hand on that ball head, on, the, on your head, and pray for yourself. Because you know what? When your father has power and a promise to you, all you got to say, by your stripes, he's, I'm healed. That's all he got to say. That word is manifest in a promise. All you've got to do is believe it. All you have to do is understand that relationship that you got with him. He said, number 13 to 16, no one has ascended to heaven, right? No one has ascended to heaven. But he who came down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. And as Moses, let me tell you something. You cannot... In the word of God, it's telling you everything that you need to know. Is it anything outside the word of God that you need to know? People will come and tell you things. And if you're enough to listen to it, right? 
what is it, put 15 cents in my pocket, put my white sneakers on, go in the mountain and wait for the spaceship and take some poison, right? If you don't know no better what you do, you do it, right? If one of y'all did that now, the Holy Spirit would probably tell me, say, Deacon Johnson, kill him. Put him out of his misery. The Holy Spirit ain't going to tell me that. But I like to, if you did something like that. But see, the thing about a powerful mind is this. If I can find a way to overwhelm you, I will. I can start off calling myself a preacher. I can start off calling myself an apostle. I can start off calling myself something that you say, everything I say, you got to believe. Boy, I tell you something. All my life, I had a hard head. Because when people come, I don't deal with people that much. And the thing about me is this. I feel sorry sometimes that I don't. But the thing about that we have to learn, there are certain people you want to deal with and certain people you don't want to deal with. Because certain people can drag you down to the bottom and some people can lift you up. If you find somebody that don't want to encourage you, you need to leave that person alone. Because we know you cannot prosper with a person who study pulling on you. You can only prosper when God is in your life. Because when he's in your life, the Holy Spirit is going to tell you, say, leave it alone. It's up to you whether you want to leave it alone. He ain't going to make you. But the consequences will be so great. Nobody went to heaven but the Son of Man. He come down from heaven. And he went back to heaven. And the reason he showed it, I'm going to tell you something. And Moses lifted up, let me tell you something, when the serpent was biting him, right? Those snakes was out there. Boy, those snakes say, okay. God, he was complaining, so God gave him something to complain about. Boy, let me tell you something. That's one of our worst problems. We can complain. But see, you, you, grace, well, I'm going to tell you something. Grace do a lot of work. Because if you had to face this, Look at here in number 17, 9. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, them serpent was biting them. We have sinned. I can repent now, boy. Because why? I can repent because I'm going to die. Everybody around you is falling dead because them snakes are doing their job. In Genesis, it talks about the serpent. In Revelation, it talks about the serpent. And the Bible talks about it. And they talk about them in evil, sinful ways. But then you look at this. He's saying, therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned, for we have spoken again against the, the Lord. And again, you pray it to the Lord that he will take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the, for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent. And set him on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was. If the serpent had bitten anyone, then they look at the serpent, at the bronze serpent, he lived. You know. <laughs> Can you comprehend that? I've been bit by a snake and all I got to do is look up at a snake. But see that bronze serpent, right? He done went through the fire. That bronze been cleaned up. Because what is it representing? What is Jesus talking about? That same bronze serpent that we everybody take serpent for easy, it's been cleaned up. Your sins on a pure body has made that Jesus Christ, a sinful person. Not that he had any, but I'm going to tell you something. The thing that you have to look at, that faith that took you to look at that servant, that's the faith that you need to believe in Jesus Christ for the work he did. There is no way anybody looked at a cross and say, I get on the cross and save mankind. Uh-uh. I'll say my children. Let me think. That is not an easy job. But he was sent here to do it. He's telling his men this now, but he can't see it. Right? 
All he's doing in Nicodemus, when you see the end, is planting the seed. I want you to give up what you already know. What you know already, I want you to release that. Start fresh, just like we had to do. You think that we're just referring to Nicodemus.